Hi, Stuart. I have a question. Thank you for that deep, amazing meditation. Um, I had a, a trauma, traumatic memory come up during the meditation at one point, and I felt all the emotions from it. And I put that in my hara, and then I just started to sweat a lot. It felt like really hot. Do these things come up to be healed? Yes. Yes. I mean, that experience has been buried inside you for I don't know how long. It was and, an old one. And it's been released. And if you bring it into the hara, even a sweat is letting go of all the poisons, you know, that you've been retaining inside yourself because of that experience that you repress. So it's really good, you know, I mean, just keep doing stuff like that. You just <coughs> get freer and freer inside yourself. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? Stuart, I'll ask you a question about, because I've been asking to go deeper, you know, and it, so just around like support with like asking to go deeper, getting out of the superficial asking and being in the depth of a genuine ask, if you could speak to that. You know, Wendy, I speak to that all the time. I mean, <clears throat> No matter how deeply you go, it, it can be a genuine need based upon, you know, a genuine you know, depth of surrender based upon how deep your need is to really let go of the things inside you that are blocking you. As your need gets deeper, you know, the level of surrender gets deeper. You tap much more profound energies. You tap things that have been repressed in you for years and you're capable of letting go of them, but it all is contingent upon what your need is. A lot of people, their need is to just kind of be satisfied in life. I don't think that's your need, but many people function that way. And when they reach this level of kind of satisfaction, the need, I mean, they're satiated. You know, I mean, uh, the depth of one's need determines how deeply you're going to surrender. And that grows, you understand? Uh, when the need is on a superficial level, when one first begins to do meditation, you understand, as they plummet their inner work, their inner life, the need gets deeper. You begin to taste and experience energies that are of such an amazing nature that you want more of it. You want to let it take you deeper. You don't want to hold on to anything that's keeping you from having a spiritual life. I mean, that's the answer, really. I mean, and you have to have patience with yourself and you have to allow that hunger to grow inside you. You know, that need in you to truly be connected with God to get rid of all the obstructions, the things, you know, that are keeping you from doing it, ultimately attaining in yourself a state of nothingness. You know, and that state of nothingness allows spiritual energy to truly flow through you. Even as you approach that state, there's more spiritual energy that guides your life. I mean, nobody's going to be completely nothing, you know, We're, nobody's perfect. But we all work to attain that perfection. And in the working to attain that perfection, we get more conscious, we grow, we get more capacity to live here with an open heart, with love, with chakra system that works better. And now, the whole fountainhead of all of this is a human being's need to grow. You don't even have to believe in God, for, for God's sake, you know? But 
you have to feel something deeply inside that says, I really want to be a happy person. That's really what I want in life. I want to have joy in my heart, love inside me. I want to live that way every day. And it has nothing to do with one's belief system. It has to, only to do with developing the craft of inner work so you can attain that level of consciousness in yourself. I mean, that's how you do it. And then keep the need, allowing the need to get deeper. And then letting it manifest in how you live your life in the world. You know, what you're willing to do to serve a higher force of energy in the universe. And not by rote and not by somebody else's commandment of what they think you're supposed to do, but from an organic, deep, inner thing in you that says, you know, I have to do this. You know, from something that is unexplainable inside a human being that really enables them to tap such a deep state of surrender that it not only is an inner experience, but it really manifests in what you do every day in your life. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Well, I just have a little announcement to make. You know, on Saturday, my, you know, my beautiful daughter is moving from here. And, uh, you know, this is something I've been waiting for for a long time. And it's why I moved in here so that she can truly have an independent life. Doesn't, you know, it mean, you know, she's not moving far, but it's at least she and her boyfriend, they're gonna support. At any rate, it opens up my, apartment a little bit more because she won't be working here, you know, which will enable me to have classes here in person with, I don't know, not a lot of people, but maybe five, six people that can come at a time. And if people are interested in doing that, you know, you should really get in touch with me because these in-person classes, as some of you can testify, are very powerful. I mean, these Zoom classes are pretty powerful but the in-person ones are transformative. So if you wanna come, let me know and uh, we can arrange it. Uh, it's, you know, that'll be after Saturday. I have to go out and buy some chairs and, you know, a few things, and, you know, but it's nothing major, you know? So that's becoming available. And of course, that's going to lead to the next step where I'm hoping to get a big enough apartment or a house somewhere that I can run, not an ashram, I don't want an ashram, <laughs> but a place where there can be regular classes that people can attend, you know, at least four or five days a week. You know, hands-on healing classes and all of that stuff that I do that's very deep and helps people to grow in a very profound way. And I'm trying to, you know, it's my way of surrendering. It's my way of serving in the world, you know, of moving forward this way and trying to, you know, you know, find a place where I can do this. The beginning is this apartment I'm living in, where at least five, maybe five, six people, four or five people can come at a time to a class. So this is open to you all, and hopefully people that live in and around New York will really take advantage of this. The only thing I ask is something that doesn't rub well with a lot of people, and that is I ask people to be vaccinated. That's it. I don't want any kind of thing in my mind about the fear of anybody getting COVID that comes here. So I'm I'm mandating something that I would never would have mandated in my life. <laughs> But I have to do it, you know, just for my protection and for everyone's protection who comes here. That's the only restriction. 
other than that, you know, everyone is welcome to come. And, uh, you know, I trust people. I'm not going to ask you to show me a vaccination card. <laughs> you know, I just, it's something that has to be done. You know, I, does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I can ask a question, Stuart. I usually have one. Um, uh, you used to you used to give classes um, in in other places, and they would be like weekend workshops. Uh, I did that all of two thousand nineteen, and I, I you know I I stopped doing it because of COVID nineteen. You know, uh, the, the, the one place I used to go to, which is a very nice place, you know, really not far from here, maybe an hour from here, uh, uh, they closed down. And I, I said, no, I can't do this because of this pandemic that is going on. I would like to start that again, but I want to be sure, you know, I, I don't want to start this in the middle of a, an epidemic that's going on and people get sick and you know it's gonna be very difficult to do these classes with masks on you know mm. so I I just want to be careful look I I I never really took vaccinations in my life I was always against them but this time I said no Stuart you know my daughter got the problem and she got very sick and it wasn't a good thing for me to see you know and I said okay I'll get the vaccinations and people that come into my house they have to be vaccinated. And another element to this is in 2019, I traveled 98,000 miles around the world, literally Europe, South America, a couple of times, you know, Europe, a couple of times, all over the United States. And uh, I got very sick and I'm sure I got really sick. I wound up in a hospital having a major operation. And I'm sure that happened because of all of that traveling, I finally made a decision. No, I'm not going to do this anymore. If people want this incredible thing that comes through me, they're going to have to come here. I mean that. And if you can't come here and you don't want to come here, uh, it's not my problem. I came, I was like a doctor paying house calls to groups all over the world and I'm not going to do it anymore. I almost killed myself doing that. So, you know, I'm open to people coming. Uh, if it means you got to get a vaccination and you want to, you don't want to do it and miss this kind of thing, it's not my problem. It's really not, you know. And I, but I'm not going to do what I did in 2019. I, you know, I must kill myself. Mm -hmm. And I traveled 98,000 miles simply to teach meditation. That's what I did. And I said, Stuart, no, you can't kill yourself. So if people want this, and you ask some people that have been here, like Bob Anderson and, and you know, Jan and uh, Shakur and other, I mean, they go, they leave here transformed. And Bob Anderson is coming back the third time already to have these classes here in person. So I, people have to make that commitment. Otherwise, I, I, there's nothing I can do. My house is open now, it will be after Saturday so that people can come and study and do classes here. I do everything that's possible under the sun, but I am not gonna do that traveling anymore. Okay, got it. You got it? And, and, and maybe I will have retreats again, I would love to. You know, I can't tell you the amount of work that goes in for me to do a retreat. You know, you have 25 people in a room having to do hands-on and three classes a day and, you know, and uh, I, you know, it's a very powerful weekend, you know, and I don't mind doing it, but I'm not going to do it while, you know, 150,000 people a day are getting COVID in this country, 100,000 people a day are getting COVID in this country. 
out of respect for all of you and out of respect for myself and people I'm close to. So the best I can do right now is tell you that after Saturday, <laughs> you know, if you want to come here, let me know and we can work it out where there, where there will be classes. <clears throat> I'd love to have classes with all of you in person. That's the best I can do right now. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, then there will be a meditation on Thursday, Wednesday. And as I always end this, you know, in all humility, God bless you all. Thank you for being here and be part of this. And I must admit that having you in my life has really helped me to grow a great deal and to open so many doors that have gotten me closer to God. And I really am deeply grateful to all of you. And you know, and I, when I see people come, I, it, it just really fills my heart with a lot of gratitude. So God bless you all. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. And But I see you all on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.